Hey guys, Josh from Depth Channel, and the other day I was answering emails, which if you don't know, you can send me an email at adeptdape at yahoo.com if you have a cat engine question. And my buddy Dale, who I was emailing, said, Hey Josh, have you heard of the new GPFs? Basically a gasoline particulate filter. Basically a DPF, which most people are familiar with if you own a diesel engine, but on a gasoline engine. What? In fact, this is what came to mind. <laughs> And if you don't know, DPFs were basically forced on the diesel market around the year 2007 to get rid of the black smoke, which is particulate matter. But gasoline engines have never used them. And I was thinking, why the heck? It's been all these years and gasoline engines have had lots of emissions regulations. Why all of a sudden? Well, it's kind of a complicated story, but what we're going to be talking about here is why they need them. Maybe not all cars do need them. So what, not even cars, but gasoline engines. So why would one need a GPF? Well, it all goes to gasoline fuel systems. And gasoline and diesel fuel systems for a long time were very different, of course. Diesel engines have always been high pressure injection systems. They had indirect injection for a little while where they wouldn't spray fuel directly into the cylinder, but into a little combustion chamber they call those pre-combustion chambers and then they've done direct injection for 50 years and there are different styles of diesel fuel systems you've got huey and mechanical unit injectors common rail which is super common now but gasoline engines never really use those systems it was always diesel fuel and of course diesel you would see trucks billowing out black smoke until 2007 when they were required to use DPFs. Now, diesels up to 2007s were getting more efficient and cleaner burning. That electronics and the need for the DPF wasn't quite as needed as they were before in the older mechanical systems, but they still had particulate matter they were putting out. But cars have never needed them. Cars have had O2 sensors and catalytic converters. They used to have air pumps or smog pumps, whatever you wanted to call them. But they had a very different fuel system. They never directly injected fuel into the cylinders. They used to have basically a big toilet on top of your intake manifold and you would push on the gas pedal and it would dump fuel into the engine and they called those carburetors. And I'm kidding, carburetors are actually amazingly efficient for what they are, but they're just mechanical fuel regulators. Of course, there were mechanical injection systems too for gasoline engines but very very uncommon at least in the u.s and then they went to which was very common a tbi a throttle body injection which is basically an electronic carburetor it was more efficient computer controlled and then they had multi-porn injection but then something happened in fact i own one of these engines car manufacturers or gasoline engine producers in particular started using almost a diesel style fuel system because it's more efficient you can get much better fuel economy if you directly inject fuel into the cylinders now there's some problems with that so my work van has the 4.3 chevy the ecotec 3 and i had to replace the camshaft on it but it has this fuel system which is very different it's very similar almost identical to a common rail diesel injection fuel system so it has injectors that spray high pressure fuel directly into the cylinder so usually gasoline engines would mix fuel in the intake manifold through the throttle body or carburetor maybe multi-port but it doesn't really mix as much well and then go into the cylinder it has to be at a very particular fuel ratio and then it would ignite with a spark plug but if you do direct injection, you can have higher efficiency because you don't have to mix the fuel in the air. You can mess with your compression ratios, get higher cylinder pressures, be more efficient. I have two Chevy 2500s. One has the six liter, the older style without this fuel system. And then I have the 4.3. They're both 2500 Chevy. One of them gets 15 miles to the gallon. The other one gets about 22 miles to the gallon. And the one that gets 22 miles to the gallon is much heavier because it has all my tools in it. The other is just a passenger van. Even though it weighs several thousand pounds more, it gets much better fuel economy. Why? Well, slightly smaller engines, a 4.3 liter, but it has that fuel system in it. 
the direct injection fuel system. Might be saying, Josh, this is about GPFs. What the heck are you talking about? Well, the reason you need a GPF, the gasoline DPF, is because gasoline engines have been getting diesel style fuel systems, which have involved increased fuel economy. However, now, since it has a diesel style fuel system, it's producing something gasoline engines never really produced, which is particulate matter. Now, you're never gonna see one dumping out tons of black smoke, like a diesel would in particular, but apparently it's enough that regulatory agencies and the engine manufacturers said, hey, we're producing a little bit of particulate matter now. We should be filtering it out. Now, folks, I worked at CAT when the DPFs were coming out. Those systems were problem prone, insanely high, but not necessarily the DPF itself. They were problem prone because of the regen systems. Of course, filters, folks get plugged over time. Air filters, oil filters, fuel filters, whatever. Now, normally you replace the filter in an oil filter and an air filter, but a GPF or a DPF is very expensive. So you're not just gonna throw it away. So what the manufacturers did was they have what they call a regen system, which I have several videos on, but the cat regen system was very problem prone. Use a lot of fuel and brakes often because you have to get the exhaust temperature up very high. So it had basically a way of injecting fuel into the exhaust, igniting it, and then cooking the DPF, turning all the soot that it's been collecting, particulate matter, and just burning it off. Now it will collect ash over time and eventually will have to get replaced or professionally cleaned off of the truck. But that's how they worked and they had a ton of problems. In fact, I would not own a diesel, which I've only ever owned two little diesel Kubota engines, but I would never own one with a DPF or I wouldn't own one particularly with any sort of DEF, D-E-F or SCR system. I really hope they don't start putting SCR systems on cars. Oh my gosh. But the problem with a regen system is the regen system, not necessarily the GPF or the DPF. Those systems don't have any moving parts, but the regen systems do. They have to have fuel that gets injected into the exhaust. You're wasting fuel. You have to have a spark system or something to elevate the temperature. So yeah, so are cars coming out with it? Yes, in fact, Ford already has GPFs on their 2025 Mav Maverick, which is a turbocharged, I believe, direct injection uh, gasoline engine. So turbochargers and direct injection like a diesel engine, well, now you're getting exhaust kind of like a diesel engine, which is a problem. They are, are all vehicles gonna have them? No, because not all are gonna use this same style fuel system, but just to know that when you're looking at vehicles now, you might have something more in common with a diesel engine than you had with a gasoline engine. Thank you guys have made it this far. How about a little destruction of the week? This week's destruction of the week, we actually have two different ones, but the first one is from Jay. And let's wish Jay some good luck here, folks. He had just bought this Cummins 15 liter and said he had 4,000 miles on it since purchasing it, driving along and all of a sudden, bam! Not good, folks. What you're looking at here is a rod bearing. Spun the rod bearing, broke the crankshaft in half. I'm uh, not sure which happened first. My guess would be the crank broke and then spun the rod, but I'm not sure. Looks like he doesn't live in palm strings here, folks, but he did get lucky in that it didn't actually damage the rest of the engine, so he had to get a new crankshaft, one connecting rod, and it's running now, so good for him. The next one's from Mike, and this is more of a story. And if you look here, if you're familiar with the engines, this is a 346E. The cam timing mark is two teeth off from where it's supposed to be. So Mike had emailed me and said that his 346E was running weird, throwing a timing code, and he was having problems finding it. I said, you need to pull the peanut cover and look at the cam gear. And that's when he found this. So what happened is he had removed the oil fill cap, which was on the front of the engine, and the bolt that holds the T-handle fell into the gear train here. However, instead of damaging the engine, it actually just pushed the sliding hub back and changed his cam timing. So he got both unlucky and lucky. Thought it was interesting. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.